a new opportunity came upon me. So I would still visit that uh, boutique, although that place shut down that particular house. And uh, they opened a different, like, office-type location. They were still losing money. It eventually shut down, but... <clears throat> I'd visit, even though I wasn't, quote-unquote, supposed to. And, uh... The random opportunity came... <clears throat> that... One of the friends... Of one of the owners... There were actually three owners. Which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, one of her friends needed... An assistant, personal assistant slash nanny. And uh, they were looking for somebody they could trust. And since I was well trusted, she suggested me. And so I started a dialogue with this person. And we were talking over email. And we hit off on a lot of cool points. We were kind of alternative y in a lot of different ways. Uh, and it sounded like something I really wanted to do. The only thing was that it was in California when I was still in Texas. I know I have no idea what Texas looks like. Wait, what is it like this? Oh fuck! I have no idea. Oh man! <clears throat> From Austin, Texas, it was in a town called Anaheim, which is outside of Los Angeles. It's in Orange County. Uh. So I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, new new adventure. I already had been in t Austin for four years. Um, being raised in Chicago my whole life previously. Now it's time for a new place. Uh, <clears throat> and it's not like a more cush job than uh, working as a cashier. So I think I only worked one day back to a cashier. And then I was bon voyage. And back, and uh, not back, but now to California. Packed all my bags that I could fit. Left the house that I was doing. I, sh I shipped a lot of stuff. She offered to pay for a lot of shipping. Yeah, it seemed like seemed like she was like wealthy or whatever. So I was like, uh, and she would quote unquote take care of me. So that seemed like a nice situation. Like, yeah, I don't have to worry about stuff. Now. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this whole business. So, so she had three kids. This is her. She had uh, a 17 year old. So, put in perspective, I'm like 20 something <laughs> at that time. He's 17, so I, he didn't really need babysitting. There was a 10-year-old and a 3-year-old. They're all boys. I don't really like watching boys, but whatever. It was a job. Um, the 10-year-old liked music and stuff, so that was cool because I was into music too. And video games, which I was obviously really into. The 3-year-old was like nuts. He was just like, he was pretty hilarious. A lot of antics, but he was very contrarian. He would do the opposite of what, whatever you wanted to ask him. He would do the opposite. So you had to do reverse psychology. Um, I would teach music to the ten-year-old a little bit. Seventeen-year-old was kind of chaotic too. He was, he was pretty funny too, but he was uh, uh, very mischievous, I guess you could say. So it was cool. I got to like cook a little bit, and especially learn cooking from her because she was an amazing cook. Uh, she was really about we both ate vegan and gluten free and she just would make stuff from the source and uh, and make delicious stuff all from like the, the core ingredients instead of using anything that's processed totally non-processed um, and I was a live-in nanny so it was really intense I was used to staying up really late um, but every time 6 in the morning that little three-year-old was like, Julian, Julian, uh, come, come play. Uh, da, 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 da. So, and I didn't have my own privacy. It was really tough. It was quite challenging. But it was kind of cool to live in California. She um, would drive to places, drive to San Francisco, drive to Los Angeles, look at cool places. I got to see all the sights, Hollywood sign, uh, the beach, you know, all the good stuff of L.A. Uh, 
and got to give that experience. Um, but it wasn't really working out for me. Uh, it wasn't enough space. Uh, the job kept downgrading. It was at first I didn't have to do much work. It was just basically like nannying. But now it was like more about cleaning and less pay, less space, more work. It just the deal kept getting worse and worse and worse. So I had to I had to find something else. So I started working at this uh, this restaurant that uh, was like a small restaurant. It was meant to be a chain, but it wasn't yet. And it was a vegan restaurant, which I was pretty passionate about veganism. Um, although I did make fun of, I like to make fun of vegans a lot. <laughs> um, I like to say that vegans, they love animals, uh, but they hate plants. They hate, uh, you know, because they kill plants. They eat them. They hate, they hate trees and stuff. <laughs> they don't really, but who knows that they don't have feelings, you know? How do you know that a flower or, uh, you know, like an eggplant doesn't feel pain when you eat it, you know? You don't know. Just because it doesn't scream like, like the piggy. Wee, 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 wee. That's my piggy sound. Um, <clears throat> so this is an interesting position. I was a front service person. So like cashiering and food running and I hardly worked at any restaurants and uh, a lot of washing dishes, tons of dishes. The first day I had to wash so many dishes and the head chef was just this ultimate asshole. He was the worst. Um, and so there's a lot of pressure. They would just throw like greasy ass pans in your, in your dish soap and make it all oily. They just wreck your shit and just like just demanding like speed and stuff. He's like, you know, you need to hustle and stuff. Um, so I, I got more comfortable there and I actually gathered a whole cool group of friends, all these coworkers that were really cool. Um, I ended up moving in with two of them. Um, and they became like super, super close friends. Uh, and, uh, it's probably, the, I think it's the second longest job I've ever worked at. I worked there for two years or actually I think it was a year and a half. So that's it's not even that long, but it was pretty long for me keep jumping jobs like nobody's business but uh, I got a lot of shit for my pants there there's a lot of holes in them uh, but I didn't care I liked I was, it was kinda like this punkness to the place well, I also got to bartend so I got to have a little bit of experience with that and that was fun to do first first night was really busy for me and it was like this it was supposed to be the, the farewell night for this guy who was working there but the owner got pissed at him. Something about, like, keys or, or no, scheduling. Like, the guy said uh, he was coming in late or something like that. I guess he said he was, he was, he told her before that he was going to come in late. But she was pissed off about it. And she was like, she's like, no, you're fired right now. Instead of quitting. Instead of quitting the last day, he was fired. So I had to replace him that night. And, like, everybody who's come to the bar was like, where's this guy? It's supposed to be his last night. I'm like, yeah, he actually got fired on the spot. It was kind of kind of a weird situation. And there's a lot of people. So it was a lot of pressure to get, you know, beers out and stuff. But I was able to handle it. I had had the traditional um, uh, keg spill in your face, trying to, trying to change the keg. And, but I got through, you know. There was a lot of abuses in that place. A lot of people... We started out getting free one free meal, but then they took that away. So uh, people still felt entitled to it. So we all, you know, still, still created a meal, created it to work out for us. You can just send a ticket. There's a little trick with the computer system where you can send the ticket without paying for it. So that was always going on, and uh, people taking drinks and stuff like that. Not alcohol. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> uh, what else to tell about this place? It was really fun. We were really silly in the back and stuff, doing Snapchats and throwing stuff around, being really silly. Um, I guess I feel like I'm going to all sorts of different stories, but I'm just going to talk about Necoplex. 
uh, Necoplex was my idea for this game night kind of thing. I'm still working on it too. I'm going to still do it where I am right now. Uh, but that was the first iteration of it. It was inspired by this game nights would have with our friends, most, mostly co-workers. Um, especially, notably, this one night we had people playing Catan, this board game. In my room there was a karaoke set up. It was just basically YouTube with a microphone. And everybody in there is singing and stuff. So there's that room. There's the board games, and then people were playing Super Smash Brothers, and uh, you know there were drinks and ganja. It was just like a sweet party time, and everybody enjoyed. It was different, you know, every, a variety of different types of people all enjoying games together. So I wanted to create that. Eventually, I wanted to create into a business, and I still do. But uh, in the meantime, just making it into events. So I was doing that as a weekly event at that restaurant that I was working at. And uh, the logo was a, was a can't. It's not a very good iteration of it, but yeah, there you go. Um, nose, he has nose. And there's like crystally stuff around him. So we had a Smash Brothers tournament. I had like a Nintendo 64 set up, like chess, crafts, crazy hats, prizes. Uh, it was pretty sweet. So I ran that for like four weeks, but at the time, uh, I was breaking up with my girlfriend, which she also worked there. Like I said, best friends, everything. It was just like so tied to this place. We're broken up, and she kept visiting while, me while I was working, trying to get back with me, and like just doing weird stuff to make me try to make me jealous, like bringing guys and stuff like that. It was really fucked up. But unfortunately, there was we were the only two bartenders at the time, so we had to always at night somebody had to cover the bar and since I had my game night I couldn't work those nights so she would be at the bar and be at the bar which is like right where all my game stuff is happening and so like I'm trying to run this stuff trying to make it all work I had a top hat at the time and uh, she would always be pulling me aside and just doing stuff to make drama and stuff it was just it was absolute bullshit it wasn't until she was doing weird stuff to get into my house and basically being very stalkery that I was fed up with it and I'm like, I gotta get out of here. And that's exactly what I did. I decided to go back to Illinois and live uh, live with my dad at the time, which I was living on my own for so long that to live with, you know, like your parents, it's kind of it's kind of pressured. Um, but after that was a whole, like a... A whole series of jobs in the in the like shortest succession yet 